Let's talk some credit horror stories, if you will. All right. Uh, we'll get started. In, we're going to talk about some credit horror stories, things that have gone completely wrong due to their credit. Hopefully, you can learn from them so you avoid them, so you don't have to live in a haunted house, go to a haunted bank, and uh, suffer like they did. So I think probably one of the worst stories I ever heard was uh, when I was living in Vegas, had the office in Vegas, and I met this person somewhere, and I don't remember where it was, but they had paid all of their bills with their debit card. And you've heard me say this, you know, a lot, if you follow me at all, that you should never use a debit card. And when you say never, I know there are times that you have to use a debit card. I use a debit card once a week at Winco because Winco doesn't accept credit cards. So I have to use either cash, which I don't carry cash, or I got to use my debit card. So because of that, I uh, have a debit card specifically set up for groceries, for my Winco budget, if you will, my grocery budget at Winco. It's a few hundred bucks a month, primarily to buy these. I buy these either at Winco or Albertsons. You know, a lot of people think it's the caffeine. It's not the caffeine that I like about this so much. Even though that is, they do have 300 milligrams of caffeine. I like the branch chain amino acids and the vitamin Bs that come with this. There's a little bit of electrolytes in there. Uh, but 10 calories. Tastes good. Reminds me of those orange, and that's what it's supposed to taste like, the orange um, it's called Orange Dream Sickle. Remember the Orange Dream Sickle that had the ice cream inside of it? That's what this tastes like. It is by far the best energy drink I've had. And I have a friend that owns a very large company that makes energy drinks and sells millions of dollars of them a year. And I like those better, unfortunately. I wish I liked his better, but I don't. He also puts red dye 40 in his drink. And therefore, I won't drink it. So anyway, um, Tommy says, and I'm going to get into this in a minute, but Tom, I want to show you something. Tommy says he's on vacation. Tommy, my friend, you know not to use the word vacation unless you're a W-2 employee and you don't get to take business trips. If you're a business owner, and I believe, Tommy, you're a business owner, you should never take a vacation. You should always take business trips. Now there, I'm now I'm saying should. I try not to say should. I try not to say always, every time, never, should. I try not to say certain words like that. So back to the never thing. You should never use a debit card unless you have to. And if you have to use a debit card like at Winco or certain gas stations in California, then make sure that debit card is attached to a checking account that does not have all your money in it. So back to the horror story. This lady uses a debit card to pay her bills, including her car insurance. Saved up a bunch of money, went on a two-week cruise, all, all expenses paid, time of her life. For whatever reason, she decided to turn off her phone. So she did not have, even though cruises have, you know, cruise lines have internet on them. She decided to turn off her phone so she could actually take her vacation. And unfortunately, while she was on vacation... Something happened, and she ended up in the haunted bank. <laughs> so here's what happened. She went on vacation for two weeks. Right after she left, or maybe when she was using her debit card on vacation in another country, someone hacked her debit card. Because they hacked her debit card, her car insurance payment failed. They called her. They emailed her. They text messaged her. She didn't answer. She got back from Las Vegas, or back to Las Vegas, rather. Her new car was driving home on Interstate 215, 
got hit by a drunk driver who also didn't have insurance. She didn't have insurance because her debit card got hacked. And when her debit card got hacked, it drained her bank account. And when her bank account got drained, it didn't pay the car insurance. And on her way home from her vacation, she got hit by a drunk driver who did not have insurance. And because she didn't have insurance on her brand new car that got totaled, she ended up filing bankruptcy. Here's what happened. Got hit by a drunk driver that didn't have insurance. Therefore, she needed to use her insurance to pay for the car that she had a loan on. Because her insurance lapsed, they didn't pay for the damages, which means she couldn't pay for the car. Because she didn't have a car, she couldn't go to work. Because she didn't go to work, she lost her job, which then resulted in her losing her apartment, which then resulted in her filing bankruptcy. Because she lost the apartment, lost the job, so she couldn't pay the rest of her bills. But when the bank sued her because the car technically got repoed because she stopped paying it, because it got totaled, she ended up in bankruptcy, all because she used a debit card. So if you want to avoid the haunted bank, avoid using a debit card. Now, if you have to use a debit card, then what I do is I have a separate checking account with my main bank, and that's my Winco grocery account. So if it gets hacked, I'm only going to lose a maximum of a couple hundred bucks. There are times it is inconvenient. I promise you that it is inconvenient. Sometimes I go to Winco, and I will literally pull up my phone, open up my app, transfers transfer the money from my normal business or my normal personal account to the debit card account so I can use Winco. And sometimes I forget to do it before I go into Winco. And then I got to do it literally at the cash register. I got to look at my little Sawyer bear there. I open it up. I open, click on the link and I transfer money while I'm in, in line. If I forget to do it before I walk into the store, sometimes I don't do it when I, I'm in the parking lot because Winco sometimes runs out of these drinks. So literally, someone went from living on top of the world, cruising the world for two weeks, not a care in the world, came back, got in a car accident, lost her job, lost her car, lost her house, filed bankruptcy sad and it sucks so more of the story don't use a debit card don't use a debit card use a credit card instead all right how's that for a scary story here's another one for you this one is close to where tommy is down in uh tennessee gatlinburg tennessee i think that's where he's from or that's where he was on vacation i think is what he said yeah gatlinburg so this person went, and the next person I'm going to talk about. You look here, there's a whole bunch of credit cards underneath me. The, the, the floor is like a credit card. But this person went, and I talked to this person this summer, and I asked. I had a bunch of cars on his credit report one of which had a bunch of late payments. And I'm like, what's going on with this car with the late payments? He goes, that's my ex-girlfriend's car. Why is your ex-girlfriend's car loan on your credit? And why is she not making the payments? Now, some of these car loans, guys, they can be seven years. My, my Ferrari, which is almost paid off, it'll be paid off before the end of the year, was a 12-year loan to be paid off in a little over five using the Fortress banking system without making extra payments, but by simply following the Fortress banking system 
that 12 year loan on the Ferrari would be paid off in a little over five. No extra payments, simply applying the principles and the strategies that I teach inside of Fortress Banking, which you haven't gone through that course yet. I highly recommend it. You can find it in the replays. So I'm talking to this guy and he's like, yeah, it's my ex-girlfriend. I said, why, why is her loan on your credit? He goes, well, when we were together five years ago, uh, she needed a car and she had bad credit. And so because she had bad credit, I bought the car for her. We were engaged and I co-signed on it. And then we broke up. So another one of my nevers is never co-sign. And that one, my friend, is a never. And if you're going to do it, there's some certain things that you need to do, which I will explain later. But never co-sign for anyone. Now, here's what happened with this gentleman. And it, it really sucks. So he went... And he co-signed for his girlfriend, who was also his fiance, because she had bad credit. He had good credit. So in order for his fiance to drive a safe, reliable, brand new car, he co-signed for. Because after all, the short, uh, the definition of significant other, if you look at it, significant other is sign if I can't. So if you got bad credit, you need to find a significant other because they can sign if you can't. So he went and bought this brand new car for his fiance. They then broke up a year later. She went her way. He went his way. Then she got a new boyfriend. And the new boyfriend and her got engaged. And then they got married. And the new husband decided he didn't like the fact that she was driving a car that her ex-fiance bought her. But he didn't buy it for her. He just signed the loan. And so now she decided through the new husband to not pay that bill anymore. And so even though they had been split up for a couple of years, that's still showing up on his credit report and destroying his credit, was on the verge of being repossessed, and then he was going to get sued. And the ex-fiance's response to him asking, why aren't you making the payment? Her response is, because my husband doesn't want us to pay it. And if you want it, you can come get it. They're living in completely different states. And he was stuck now. So he hired us to clean up this whole mess. But all because he co-signed for his girlfriend, a.k.a. fiance. The moral of the story, never co-sign for anyone, period. Not your girlfriend, not your boyfriend, not your mom, not your dad, not your kids, not your brother, not your sister, not your employees. Because at some point, they will default on that loan. And that's why they're needing you to do it, is the significant other. Sign if I can't. So you never want to co-sign for someone, ever, 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 ever. So what can you do if you're like, I know, Rondi, I know you say don't co-sign, never co-sign, you shouldn't do it, but I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to do it my way. So if you decide to do it your way, and ignore my advice on never co-signing for someone, here's what I want you to do. You're going to go open up a new bank account. And you're going to have the person who you're co-signing for also be on this bank account. So now there's two people on this bank account. In order to remove money from this bank account, both people must be present and both people must sign. Yes, you can do this. Also. No checks will be issued from this bank account. No debit cards will be issued. End of story. None. You open the bank account, the money goes in. Preferably a savings account that 
you can't get a debit or a checking account on. And it can't be transferred from another bank account. Both people must be present. Both people must sign in order to remove money. Now, the person that is in it, the, the person that you're co-signing for that's good for it, that has the bad credit, you know, um, you want them to deposit at least one month's payment in that account. I, if I was going to do it and I was going to co-sign for someone, which I never would, but if I was going to do it, I'd make them deposit three months of payments in that account, three months. So if the payment's 500 bucks a month, you got to have at least $1,500 in that bank account at all times. And you need to set up a timer, or not a timer, an alert that if the balance drops below $1,500, you get alerted that the balance has dropped below 1500 bucks. Therefore, you can log in and see that it's dropped and then find out from the person, why is it below $1,500? And it gives you three months to get that worked out. Most likely, you're going to be the one that has to put the money in. But at least you got three months notice to figure out how you're going to get the money in there so they're not reported late. That's why you need three months notice or three months of payments in there. So you have three months to figure it out. Because here's what the worst case scenario would be. They miss the payments. The car gets repoed. You get sued. And now you have to deal with this for the next 10 years. Yes, it's 10 years because they're most likely going to sue you, get a default judgment. The judgment's going to stay on your credit for 10 years. And you'll be garnished and levied for the next 10 years. And if things go really sideways, they'll just renew the budget and renew the public record so they can continue to garnish your wages and levy your bank accounts. It's a horrible thing. It happens all the time. We see it constantly. If they stop making the payments, they stop putting money in there. You got three months, three months to get the car back from them and literally just say, okay, well, if you're not going to make the payment, Sally, I'm going to have to come, I'm going to go get my car from you and then we're going to sell it. And then you got to come up with the difference. So I would never co-sign because it's a pain in the ass to do it the right way. But if you really want to co-sign for someone, that's how you do it. Make them open a new bank account, put three months of payments in there, set up the alerts, make sure they can't take money out. They can't transfer money. They can only put money in and both of you have access via the app. So you always know the money is there. Otherwise... They will eventually miss a payment. It's, it's just bound to happen. The banks are not stupid. The banks know that this person will most likely miss a payment. That's why you have to be the sign if I can't, the significant other. Okay. How's that for a scary story? All right, let's go to the haunted house. I got so many of these. Chastity was asking me earlier this morning. It was her idea. My daughter Chastity was... All this, all the good ideas for chastities. And she was like, what kind of horror stories? I'm like, man, there are so many horror stories out there. Here's one. This is a new, he hasn't retained me yet. He's not a client yet, but I was talking to him yesterday. He's racked up over half a million dollars in credit card debt. His wife doesn't know. Over the last year, racked up over a hundred, I mean, over the last year, he's racked up over $500,000 credit card debt for a business venture that went sideways. And he was asking me yesterday, like, what do I do? And I'm like, he's not making any money. He's freaking out, as you can imagine. And he's most likely going to have to file bankruptcy and he has not told his wife. He's going to be living in a little shack like this in the doghouse, right? So, unfortunately for him, his business went sideways, and that's what bankruptcies are for. So, I walked him through it. We got a whole strategy, a whole plan. A year from now, maybe a year and a half from now, because he's got some things he's got to do. That he, if he could just go file bankruptcy today, all of these credit problems would be gone within six months. But he's got some stuff he's got to do, so it might be 12 to 18 months. Or he can try to pay it back. And he owes over half a million dollars in credit card debt, which means he has to earn 
at least $1 million to pay it back. Because he's got to make a million dollars, pay the income tax of a half a million on it to be left with a half a million to pay off the credit cards, plus interest. So really, he's got to make a couple million dollars, just pay this back. And he's like, I'm not making any money right now. Like, I'm using payday loans to pay my bills. And that's what he's doing. He's using payday loans to pay his bills so his wife doesn't know and he doesn't default. And now he's at the end. He's like, I don't know what to do. And look. My little brother killed himself in 2006. I started this company in 2007 in an attempt to keep people from hurting themselves, killing themselves, killing their families, hurting other people. The whole thing, that's part of why I started Fortress, was so people had some hope. And, you know, after I got done talking to this gentleman, he goes, I feel better. Like, I feel like you took a big old pile of rocks off of me. At least I can breathe. I'll be able to sleep tonight. I won't wake up with nightmares. Like I have a plan now. So if you have a bunch of debt, whether it's $500 of debt or $5 million of debt, it's not the end of the world. Our greatest fear is not the fear of dying and it's not the fear of public speaking. It's not our greatest fear. Our greatest fear is not providing for our loved ones, letting our family down. I grew up in a shack, not, not any better than that picture behind me. I, I don't worry about me going back into the shack, me going hungry. I'm sure you don't either. I know Chris is on here, Chris Maddox. He's not worried about him. Tommy that's on here, he's not worried about him. Let's see who else is on here. Sadie's on here. She's not worried about her. Sadie's worried about her babies. Sadie's worried about her brother and sister's kids that she's taking care of. That's what Sadie's worried about. Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong, because if I'm wrong, just tell me. Tell me. You don't lose sleep at night like thinking, what if everything falls apart? I lose everything. I'm, I'm not going to have any food tomorrow. You don't think about that. I'm assuming you don't, but you think about your family, don't you? It's our number one fear is letting our families down, our loved ones down. But I tell you this, that even if you lose everything, it's not the end of the world. You simply start over. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it's inconvenient. Yes, it is embarrassing. Yes, it's going to be hard. But it's not worth killing yourself over or hurting someone else. Just if you're not telling your spouse about your finances, you got to tell them. If you're struggling financially, it, it's okay. Here's what I'm learning. This year, 2023 has been the most difficult financial year that I have had in probably 14 to 15 years. It really has. The most amount of stress, the most amount of things out of my control. Um, and I was starting feel like maybe it's me like i have my friends my fr friends and people that i know and i see them on instagram and facebook and tiktok and all the other places and all the cool stuff they're doing and and i started thinking like maybe i'm doing something wrong and i realized a couple weeks ago they're just not talking about it they're just not sharing it that the majority of businesses out there right now, they're suffering. The majority of families out there, they're hurting. They're going without. And this whole thing with the COVID money, it just pushed that problem out. And now the government's not sending out money and people are starting to hurt and people are going hungry. And people, I mean, we posted a job because we're hiring for salespeople. Uh, Boise only. By the way, internal sales in the office in Boise only. Don't apply if you're outside of Boise. I don't, I don't care how good you are at sales. We're not hiring outside. 
We posted an ad yesterday. We had nine people already apply. Nine people that are very, very qualified. Two years ago, we went months without people applying. Now we put an ad in there and it's just dozens of people every day. It was nine as of last night, this morning. So we posted the ad last night. This morning, there's already nine people. and It's probably several dozen by now. So if you're struggling financially, everybody else is too. If you're struggling uh, with your business, everybody else is too. There's a few businesses that aren't, but even Amazon was laying off people. So even Walmart, these big retailers. So the point to that is, don't believe everything you see on social media. Their lives are not that good. They're not that good. And fortunately for me, and unfortunately, I think it's probably more of an unfortunate. Um, I see what's in the skeletons in the closet, if you will. I look up here, I see the skeletons in this haunted pumpkin house. Um, I, I see the, um, the skeletons in their closet. I know a gentleman right now that drives a Rolls Royce, a couple of them actually, a couple Ferraris, talking about how much money he's making, the tens of millions of dollars that he's got coming in right now. And yet a couple of weeks ago, he stopped making the payments on his leased Ferraris and his leased Rolls Royces. Couldn't make the lease payments. So it's not just... Not just you. Everybody's hurting financially. So anyway, let's go to Q&A and see what we've got over here. Yeah, so Chris Maddox confirmed what I said. He's not worried about him. He's worried about his family. That is our greatest fear. The greatest fear is not taking care of our family. It is. Um, somebody says here, can I pay you? Because now I'm going to open up the q and I'll come up with some other stories as, as long, along the way. Can you pay for a call with you to go over a strategy? Thanks. You bet. Yeah, if you go to um, rondylambert.com, you can click a call with me. If you're on this call, if you are a Fortress client, which you probably are, I am going to start offering this up to our credit builder clients and some other clients. But if you're on, as of right now, Halloween, I have not opened this up to other people now. That doesn't mean my clients did not share this and maybe they're a relative because I, I tell people, you can share this link for these calls with family members, friends, neighbors, coworkers, employees, et cetera. Because look, I just want to help as many people as I can. And if you find value in it, maybe they will too. So if you are a client, the person asked this question, um, if you are a client of Fortress already, you can schedule a call with me without paying me. If you are not a client, you would have to pay to schedule a call to pick my brain or run a strategy over with me. But if you are a client, just reach out to Vanessa or anybody else in customer support and just say, hey, you want to schedule a 15 minute call with me or go to rondylambert.com and just schedule a call with me, a 15 minute call. So if you do a 15 minute call, I'll hook you up on that. Okay, Then you don't have to pay. Let's see what this says. Nothing's worth taking your life. In October 6, 2017, my father committed suicide. I'm doing much better six years later. Sorry, Chris. I really am. I, I'm trying not to get emotional when I say that. So if I sound a little cold, please don't take it that I'm being cold. My mom died a few months ago, and so I'm still going through that. So I'm trying to be cold. But not be cold to you, Chris. But I'm trying to be cold for me so I don't break down. But my little brother, I mean, it, it affects me a lot. Um, even though it's been now 17 years. Because I, I have a lot of guilt on that. Not that I could have stopped it, but I, I wasn't even aware of what was going on. I was too busy being Mr. Fireman. Mr. Firefighter of the Year, taking care of strangers to know what was going on with my brother's life. It's my... It's my thing I got to deal with. So I'm sorry for your loss, Chris. It does get easier, but it does suck. I know. All right. And then the guy that at the person that asked if they could schedule a call with me says they are a client. So cool. Just go to rondylambert.com and um, schedule a 15 minute call with you. 
would love to help you out. All right. So <clears throat> got any other Q&A questions in there? Go ahead and throw them in there. Let's go back to the bank. What do you guys like? You like the haunted house better or the bank? I'm just having fun now. Just trying to, just having to have fun. Okay. Um, what's another horror story? I know this guy in, oh, sorry. You know who he is as well. If I said his name, you would know who he is. He is one of the greatest motivational speakers on the planet. Been doing it longer than most people have been alive. He had a son that was not a very good person. And his son purchased 26 vehicles using his dad's name through his friend who ran a dealership in... Um, North Carolina or South Carolina, or maybe it was Georgia. I don't know. But over in the South. And when I met with this person, I said, why do you have all these car loans? He's like, I don't know. Someone stole my identity. I'm like, well, all the inquiries are in South Carolina, at this one dealership. I don't know anything about that. Well, I tracked it down. It was his son. He just didn't want to admit to me that it was a son, or maybe he didn't want to admit to himself. Here's the thing. 70%. 70% of all identity theft is friends and family. Primarily, it starts out with the parents that steal their children's identity because the parents have screwed up their credit so bad. And it's not, no one walks up to you, puts a gun in your face and says, give me your identity. There's no such thing as stealing someone's identity. What they're doing is they're committing fraud. See, if they, if they walked in my house if they got in my house and they got their gun in my face before I could get my gun, they could steal something from me. They could steal stuff in my house. They could take my life. They could steal money, cars, whatever. They could have everything in my house with exception to my dogs, my family, my loved ones. Anything else in the house, I'd just give them the keys. Have fun, wreck it. I don't care. It's fully insured. Everything in my house is insured with the exception to my family and my dogs. And those are insured by ammo, if you know what I mean. So let's say, though, they come in the house and they stole whatever. They can steal it. They can take it from me. My Denny, they didn't take it. It's They're just committing fraud. But it's just a way to say that someone stole your identity and they committed fraud against the bank. Usually it's not that big of a deal. Yes, it's a pain in the butt. Yes, it's time consuming. Yes, it sucks. It's inconvenient. But look, it's not you losing the money. It's the bank. It's fraud. Someone hacks your checking account, your debit card. Look like this lady that I talked about earlier that went on a cruise that ended up losing her house, losing her car, losing her job, filing bankruptcy. She got her money back, by the way. She got her money back that got hacked when she was on that cruise. But it was too late. The car had already been totaled. She was eventually able to get a new car after she filed bankruptcy at a higher interest rate. So the problem is when you use a debit card, it, it, the banks have up to three months to get your money back. When you use a credit card, they generally give it to you. you. Literally, you get it back within minutes once you inform the bank or the credit card company that you've been hacked. Because with Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, there's insurance. And just because your debit card has a Visa logo on it does not mean it's a debit card with... Just because your debit card has a Visa logo doesn't mean it's a Visa card that has the Visa insurance. It is a debit card. It does not have the insurance. It's just Visa is process, processing it for your bank. I'm looking over here to see what this other question is on my, the monitor. Let me just throw it up there real quick. First time on the call with me, just signed up. Cool. I'm losing you. Do you keep freezing up? Oh, I'm sorry about that. Glad I got here. Happy Halloween. Same to you. Sean says, Sadie Wilson, welcome to the call. Ask away. So this person, I'll go back to him. His son had uh, stole, in quotations, his identity 26 times, purchased 26 cars. 
He ended up getting sued on them because they got they turned into repos. He got sued, and he did not want to turn in his son. So we went to work, got all that debt settled. It did put his life on hold for a while, and a lot of stress. And it's a nightmare that he could have simply avoided by putting a security freeze on your credit. So it is something you should do. You should freeze your credit. If you have not done it, it will not impact anything that we are doing. It won't make anything, it won't have a negative impact on anything we're doing. In fact, it'll actually increase the likelihood of us getting stuff deleted if if that's what you're doing, if we are working on your credit. Because not everybody on this call needs credit repair. Some people just want financial education. They want credit education. They want to learn how to pay less in taxes. They want to learn how to pay off their cars faster. But if you are having us help you with your credit, if you do freeze your credit, it will help us get more items removed and it will protect you and prevent identity theft. How do you do that? Go to experian.com forward slash freeze and file a freeze on your credit. And then you can just simply unfreeze it anytime you want to use it. If you use their app, it's even easier. You literally click freeze, you click unfreeze, and now it's open. If your credit is frozen, no one outside of you and current creditors can access your credit report. So we can still access your credit report just fine through Credit Mojo. You can access it through Credit Mojo. Your banks can access your credit report because they already have a relationship with you because your credit card companies, your credit card, they check your credit once a month whether you give them permission or not, which you already gave them permission, you just don't see it because it's not a hard inquiry. It's a soft inquiry. But your credit card company will pull your credit once a month. They just want to see what's going on with your credit. And this is why they will lower credit limits if you start maxing out credit cards or missing payments. They'll lower it or even close the account. So I would freeze your credit if I was you. I have mine frozen. No one can access my credit, which means I'm at a very low risk of identity theft because they can't get in. They can't get into anything. So let's say they did get my social and they went to apply for a new car loan or credit card or a house or a boat or whatever. When they went to apply for that loan, they would be told my account was frozen. And there's nothing they can do to unfreeze it. Nothing. They would have to, um, I shouldn't say nothing because that's one of those things. It's. It would be so difficult for them to do it, they would give up because it's virtually impossible. So if you put a freeze on your credit, annual credit or um, experian.com forward slash freeze is a great way to freeze your credit to avoid any horror stories like that. I don't see any Q&A here. If you have any questions, put it in now. Because I want to make sure I get all of these here. I don't see any. All right, cool. So one of the things you can do to increase your credit score so you're not living in the doghouse, you're not living in the haunted house, you don't have to go to the bank that is haunted is make sure you got your three credit cards open at all times. Make sure you're using your credit cards at all times. If you're not paying off your credit cards in full every month, stop using your credit cards. If you're not using them, if you're not paying off your credit cards in full every month, stop using them. Stop digging a hole. And I know that that can be hard. And I know you got to use, sometimes you got to use credit to pay bills that that you need to pay. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about going out to dinner, going out to lunch, buying some new car, uh, new clothes, buying things that you don't necessarily have to buy. So for example, if you're not paying off your credit cards every month and you're going to go out to eat for lunch or out to eat for dinner, don't use a credit card. Use cash don't have cash, don't. Meal prep. I cook uh, my meals for the next two weeks. 
I made them on Sunday. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, the whole thing. For the next two weeks, all my meals are already made in the freezer or in the fridge. I made it. I put them in the glass containers. I put them in the freezer for what I'm going to freeze. The rest goes in the fridge. And then I heat it up during the day. Not going out to dinner, not going out to lunch. I'm not doing it for the money side of it. I'm, I'm doing it because I need to control what I'm eating because I'm getting into my fitness challenge again. And I'm trying to get down below 10% body fat. The only way I can do that, or the easiest way maybe, is if I know what I'm eating, I control what I'm eating. And so I can weigh it, I can proportion it, and it is way cheaper than going out. It was, uh, I'm eating three pounds of meat a day, chicken, salmon, halibut, beef, and eggs, uh, rice and some vegetables. But basically, I'm eating like really good, high-quality organic food. And for two weeks, with three pounds of meat, almost 300 grams of protein a day was less than $200 for all of my food for two weeks, a hundred bucks a week. Think about that. That's two weeks worth of food for less than 20 bucks a day. If I went to Chipotle for one meal, that's 15 to $20 for one meal. Whereas I'm eating really healthy for less than 20 bucks for the entire day. And I'm eating a lot of food, which is been the problem is eating all the food because I'm to be frank with you I'm not eating it all because I'm just so freaking stuffed but according to my weightlifting coach the the dude that's won all the trophies and awards and all that stuff with the six packs and the bodybuilder he says I just gotta eat more so now I'm just eating a lot and anyway so point to that is if you're using your credit cards to eat and you're not paying it off in full, you got to stop using the credit card. Stop using the credit card. You don't have to worry about activity because you've got activity because it's maxed out and you're making payments every month. You don't need to continuously use the credit cards. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Sean. Chris. Oh, no, it was Tommy. Can you use still use your credit when it's frozen? Uh, yes, you can use your credit as in open credit cards. But if you're going to go buy a new car or go get a new car, you're going to have to unfreeze your credit before they can pull your credit. If you're going to apply for a new credit card, you got to unfreeze it first. If you're going to go apply for a new apartment or get a house, you got to unfreeze it. You can unfreeze it by calling the 1-800 number and putting in your PIN. Or you, if you have the app, you can literally click the app and just literally click it, log in with your face. Click on freeze. A few seconds later, your credit is unfrozen. They can pull it. Once they've approved you, you click freeze and you move on. So can you use your credit when it's frozen? Yes, as long as you're not applying for new credit. If you're applying for new credit, you'd have to unfreeze it. If you are going to, um, I recommend that you apply for new I recommend you apply to increase your credit limit every three to six months. You do not need to unfreeze your credit for your bank to look at your credit because they already have a relationship with you and it's a soft inquiry. If they're going to do a hard inquiry, you would have to unfreeze it, which I would not do. You don't want to have a hard inquiry hit just to see if they'll increase your credit limit. You want to save your inquiries for new credit or almost guaranteed increased credit. So you just need to ask them. Good question. All right. Do we got anything else? No. I was trying to think. I mean, there's so many stories that I have with, with stuff. I mean, it's just sometimes I hear these stories and it's like, I heard one today. I heard one today. I didn't listen to all of it, but it's just a funny story. So, man is sitting in his bathtub, enjoying his glass of wine, taking a bath in his bubbles, playing with his rubber ducky. All of a sudden, there's a huge crash. His wife, who maybe was 
also drank a little wine, drove her car through the wall of the house, totaled the car, destroyed the kitchen, and here he is trying to relax in his bathtub, and his wife comes crashing into the house. For whatever reason, didn't have insurance on the car, didn't have insurance on the house, didn't have the money to remodel the house and fix it. So they end up losing the car, losing the house, and now he needs to clean up his credit because had a repo, had a foreclosure. I mean, that's that's a pretty sad story, right? Kind of crazy. Things like that happen. That's what happens when you help over half a million people with credit issues. You hear all kinds of crazy, crazy stories. Most of the time, it's pretty straightforward. I lost my job. I got divorced. I got sick. COVID hit or something else happened. Every once in a while, we hear some really crazy stuff like wife got drunk, drove through the wall. I was in the bathtub trying to get drunk, and we didn't have insurance on the house or the car or anything else. And so we lost everything. That's that's an extreme, extreme case. All right. What else we got? All right. Well, it's been uh, almost an hour We're going on 50 minutes. So if you guys don't have anything, I'm going to go have some more of my dinners, even though I'm not really hungry. Got to get my protein in. Uh, next week, I will be in Florida. The week after that, I'll be in California doing, I'm teaching at both events. Um, so the next two weeks, it will be Chastney. Uh, next week, there's no chance I'll be on because I'll be speaking on Tuesday at this time. And then uh, probably in two weeks when I'm in Florida, I'll, I'll be at an event at night because I'll be actually in Florida. So, or I'll be in bed most likely because those days start at like 530 in the morning. So on East Coast time, I will probably be in bed next uh, in two weeks from now. So anyway, um, Chastity will be taking care of you the next two weeks. If you need anything, please reach out to us. We're, we're there in the office for you. Uh, to help you out. And the person that asked if he could schedule some time with me, if you want to schedule some time, go to rondylambert.com, click on 15 minute consultation, and I'll be there for you. Let's check here one more time. Yeah, I don't see any more questions. So since I don't have any more questions, I hope you have an amazing night. Happy Halloween.